we've really spent a lot of time on scale up at NVIDIA and, you know, moving from our uh, Ampere to our Hopper and now the Blackwell architecture. We've just continued to improve both the performance and the scale up, how many nodes we can connect together. So now we're shipping our NVLink 72, which really allows us to take these much more powerful Blackwell processors and combine them. That's the beauty of scale up, is it makes a bunch of discrete GPUs um, behave as if they were a single GPU. And that's important, it's easier to program, you don't have to think about how you're going to do all of these different things. We have the high-level software constructs that you're able to use. So with NVLink 72, you can do tensor parallelism, pipeline parallelism. And that's really important for a lot of reasons with some of the new large language models that we're seeing in the field. So scaling up is super important. And as Jensen showed uh, last year at GTC, we're doing that on copper. And it's always important uh, to think about how you're going to scale out at data center scale. And we say copper where you can. And of course, the challenge with copper is that its distance is limited, but the benefits are huge. So when we are able to scale up, which we do with our NVLink 72, um, we scale up with copper. And that copper is you know, lower power. It's cost efficient, it's very reliable. So copper where you can, and then we scale out beyond that with optics. And so there's a lot of interesting things that we're doing to achieve that sort of scale up. While we're not a member of UA Link, we follow the development of these standards uh, carefully. And if something comes out of that and people want us to join and there's customers and partners that are looking for us to support that, we will. Always, of course, the challenge with standards is how fast they're able to move, um, whether they're able to define a standard that actually meets the needs of both the customers and that all of the partners that are participating in an organization like that are able to agree to. We're gonna run as fast as we can uh, on scale up. And you know some of the problems that we're solving, we're finding perhaps before others are, and therefore we can run really fast uh, and not have to wait for the standards. But we always love standards, we support them. You know, When there's a broad ecosystem, we can adopt that and, and support it. InfiniBand is really the scale out fabric. Um, it comes from our heritage of high performance computing. Those HPC supercomputers was really where InfiniBand was first developed to address those very large scale applications. It turns out that that same network and some of the innovations that we developed on InfiniBand was really, really useful for AI. And so today, InfiniBand is the gold standard for AI scale-out networking. But Ethernet is vitally important as well. And there's people that want to use Ethernet for a variety of reasons. Um, so while InfiniBand has certain features and certain capabilities that really make it the gold standard with something like 30% better performance improvements um, versus Ethernet, <clears throat> The the Ethernet is is valuable and important, and we've seen very large scale implementations of that uh, 100,000 GPU deployment, for example, on Ethernet. And what's important there is it's not your traditional uh, Ethernet that we saw a decade ago or even you know today. We see other people offering Ethernet, which has not been designed and tuned to operate in AI. So if you have traditional Ethernet, which was really designed for a different set of workloads, those were highly uncorrelated workloads, millions of users, each doing different things, nothing really happening at the same time. AI is completely different. Now you have highly correlated. Instead of a million jobs in a training run, you have one job that happens to be running on 100,000 or even more GPUs. And all of those GPUs are operating at the same time, doing the same thing. They're highly synchronized. And after they get done crunching on their slice of the data, they all need to talk and tell each other what they've learned. And that is called a collective operation. 
where everybody wants to talk to everybody and all to all communication all at the same time. And that's just not what Ethernet was designed to do. And it turns out that if you naively take your existing infrastructure, your switches and your adapters and your software, and you try to run AI on it, people say, well, why can't we get the same performance that you're showing and the benchmarks that you're releasing? And, and they're running on a different kind of ethernet. They're running on an old ethernet that was designed to do something else. So we've really built our Spectrum X platform um, from the ground up for AI. It's purpose built for AI. And there's things in there that we accelerate. We do adaptive routing, we do congestion control. You have to do those things for AI because AI means that you're running one giant job across 100,000 GPUs who all want to talk to each other at exactly the same moment. That's something that Ethernet and TCP IP simply weren't designed to do. So we have Rocky, RDMA, we really pioneered that over the years. And so it's important that you buy e Ethernet that was designed for AI and not just take your old uh, you know, switches and adapters and then expect to get good performance for AI. It just won't happen. The ultra ethernet is uh, something that we we joined that. It's like UA Link where we, we haven't joined yet, but uh, when we see standards emerge and people, you know, adopt them and there's actually something that we can build, then we're happy to do so. When we look at ultra ethernet today, we have those capabilities. That And we agree with all of the requirements that you can't just use a traditional Ethernet and expect it to perform for AI. So with our Spectrum X platform, we've really implemented lots of capabilities, but there's lots of brilliant people in the AI world. We're not alone, obviously, and we're excited about that. And there's all kinds of other good ideas coming from partners and customers, and we implement those as fast as we can. When we see a great idea, we love it, we support it. Uh, and you know, as things progress, once there's a spec uh, for Ultra Ethernet, we think that you know, maybe people will want some of those features and capabilities. In the meantime, we can't wait. We're gonna run as fast as we can with our Spectrum X. We're adding new features constantly. We'll be announcing some of those new things uh, here shortly. So it's exciting time in the space because there's so many optimizations that you need to do and if you try to do it as a point function, you try to optimize at a single point, whether that's the software or the adapter or the switch or the interconnect, it's really impossible because we're optimizing across the entire data center stack. So that's scale up with our NVLink, it's scale out with InfiniBand or Ethernet, it's GPUs, it's our ConnectX, it's our Bluefield DPUs, it's all of those things all at once. And you may need to tweak some things differently. And I talked about copper versus optics. Um, we really want to use as much copper as we can for scale up. To do that, we need to make things dense. And so we brought everything close together with all of our new liquid cooled platforms. Everything impacts everything else when you're optimizing across the entire data center stack, really at data center scale, hundreds of thousands. Uh, and people are now talking about millions of GPUs, which is super exciting. It's an enormous opportunity, an enormous challenge. There's always a trade-off between building something that is bespoke for a specific application and building something that is more general purpose. So we built the GP GPU, and that's the general purpose GPU. So it does more than graphics processing. Can we optimize uh, for a specific workload? We can, and indeed we do. And so if you look across our product line, we have different products of different scale that have different numbers, for example, of graphics processing capabilities. Um, so some of them are purely compute engines, others are designed, you know, for graphics, uh, and then we have everything in between. What we're seeing is really new capabilities, new types of processors and new types of workloads, and they may in fact warrant a specific type of device. Now, we'll make some more announcements here in GTC a month from now, and that's pretty exciting. I'm really looking forward to some of the things that we're doing. We'll address 
some of those things that that you're talking about here, how we actually can optimize the performance of various things. You know, a critical thing that's happening right now, the last couple of years have been all about training and training is vitally important. You can see the capabilities, the, I think Jensen called it the iPhone moment with when ChatGPT came out for large language models. And that exploded onto the scene. People started realizing the potential of these large language models. And what we're seeing now is that shift from training to inferencing. And of course, training is something that runs for months at a time. The very large companies that are building all kinds of new models with breakthrough capabilities. But inferencing is where users and consumers of these large language models actually get to benefit. And so I think 2025 will be the year of inferencing. And we're seeing all kinds of changes there, new models that are more efficient, um, but we're also seeing the, the scaling of inferencing. And it was something that surprised people because we're seeing what's called system two thinking. That's what uh, Daniel Kahneman called system two thinking in his Thinking Fast and Thinking Slow book. And what we're seeing there is that inferencing is becoming more like training. We're doing lots and lots of compute. And the exciting thing is we're making it more efficient. The model developers are making it more efficient. And some people are concerned that we're not going to uh, benefit from that. In fact, I think it's like Jevons paradox. That's that crazy thing from the 18th century where they built a more efficient steam engine. James Watt built a more efficient steam engine. And people despair that that was going to impact the demand for the coal, the energy that drove those engines. In fact, it was the exact opposite. What happened is by making something much, much more efficient, then it got used way more broadly. And the demand actually went up for all those different steam engines and of course the coal that drove them back then. I see the same thing happening with AI and inferencing. As things get more efficient, as we continue to drive and make the efficiency the power um, per performance per watt, the performance per dollar, as we make it more efficient, it is gonna become broadly usable across all kinds of different spaces. We are in the most exciting um, stage I've ever seen in technology and I've been at it for a long, long time. Now with AI and inferencing in particular, I think we're gonna see just dramatic changes over the next five to 10 years. We're really on the edge of something that's remarkable and I'm excited about it and uh, everybody else should be too. I think we'll use a lot more of the accelerated computing that we're building. So we're super excited here at NVIDIA.